Welcome back to Let's Have It Out. Let's take a call from Adrian in Durban. Hi, Adrian. What's your question or comment? Adrian, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, what's your question or comment? Okay, my question is, um, Mr. Am I correct, Sandilia, the Black First Land First leader guy, uh, has just made a comment about uh, white capitalist television. If he stands by his, I don't know, convictions or moral standings, firstly, why is he on a white capitalist program? Why doesn't he rather go to a black capitalist program? So, uh, if, before I let you answer, I guess he did say at the beginning that I invited him here. I think I coerced him to come onto this platform. But what do you think? Is it against your morals to be on what you call a my, white monopoly capital television station? No, no it belongs yep. to us. White people own nothing, including this station. It belongs to us. It's our labor. It's our oppression. In fact, uh, banks, that's why we call for nationalization of the banks. We also will do the same with institutions such as these ones. And, and unfortunately, there's a monopoly. Today, they've done, shut down the I mean, uh, alternative um, NN7. Yeah. In South Africa today, there's monopoly of you know, media outlets. And this is the only one which, again, is available like out, of, out of the SABC. So I'll come so, here when, when I get a chance. Yeah. In fact, there should be more here. Yeah, we'll invite you more next time I'm on here. So I've got a question leading off of that. So I use a phrase, because and, and, you keep saying white people own everything. And I want to push you on that just a little bit, because I think if you go down that road, you're going to run into a problem in the future. So I ask the question right, in this book of can coconuts be trusted with the revolution? And when I say coconuts, I don't mean in a derogatory way of you're black on the outside, white on the inside. I mean it as a political grouping in this country that have access to certain white spaces and carry into that access a level of political capital. Now, what they do with that capital is neither here nor there. Now, those individuals are growing in power in the society. It's, I, you can't avoid it. They're there. They're here to stay. They're not going anywhere. And they can move between spaces. Should you trust them? Do you think they don't own anything? I, I have uh, concocted a, a phrase that says, the coconut is yeah. the, a grave digger of white supremacy. The because grave. I believe that uh, black people who are socialized as coconuts in a racist world, not just mm. South Africa, sooner or later come into the reality of their blackness and how brutal the anti-black society is. And when that happens, often they become good fighters on the side of black people. In fact, they get more angry because they realize that this whole lie of equality, of brotherhood and sisterhood does not exist. Yeah. Their blackness put them outside of the world. The coconut in South Africa is only a coconut to the extent that you are at UCT and you are amongst your friends. So let me but ask once you, you move out of that, so let me you ask just black you. like anyone else. Will you trust them though? In the heat of battle, in the middle of the revolution, these are the ones who go to Santon for drinks. They're the ones who go and shop, shop in, in Claremont. We, all, yeah. In the moment yeah. where they have to give up their economic privilege, yeah. will you trust them to make the decision to say we must take this revolution to its logical conclusion? I believe black people, in fact, Steve Bigo, I argue Steve mm. Bigo and um, Sobukwe yeah. are the first coconuts. Oh, wow. Okay, because explain, about, explain, tell me more. If you think about it, they get some of the best education available at the time. Yeah. And you must look at how they get socialized into either the Christian idiom or, you know, the English idiom. So they're very uh, aware of this um, almost two places of blackness and yeah, whiteness. But those two weren't functioning in a normal capitalist society. They were functioning in a society that said, you as a black person will forever stay down. You can be as smart as you want to be, but you will always stay down. But you're, making, now an assumption, a... you're making an assumption that yeah. today black people don't have a similar... Uh, you know, uh, impediments because you call it a no, it's not normal. This is, yeah. that's what you call it white uh, so, monopoly capital. It's still monopolized, it's still white. In fact, okay. go to New York, man. We walk down the street, you're going to get shot. Yeah. Irrespective of the fact that you come so from a middle class. So let's ask this then. The children of the guys who stole money from VBS, do you think those children would be willing to engage in politics? that will potentially get rid of their economic privilege, right? They've been fast forwarded into an economic position where capitalism said, oh, it's theft, but you know what, you can reap the benefits of it. 
Yeah, what do you do but, with but, them? Because they're not alone. Yeah. But again, we must avoid economic reductionism. Okay. Right. In a situation Fair. of uh, Oprah Winfrey, for instance, let's take her <laughs> as an example. Yeah. She's a billionaire, but she suffers racism because of her, her blackness. Yeah. In this anti-black society, your economic position really does not help you. Sooner or later, you find yourself running in the same problems that black people do. The Americans, black people in America, there's a thing called Black Wall Street. I don't know if you heard about it. Mm. Where our people in America managed to organize themselves seriously economically, they were bombed by the white system out of this economic miracle they created for themselves. Yeah. So, so let us be clear. The world is not going to protect you because you have some kind of pseudo uh, privileges of economic you know, so, oppression. You, you, you know, you, you, you know how, why I want to challenge you on that? And this is more real life, and we might run out of time, but I'm going to steal some of the time, it's fine. Is during the protests, one of the things, especially roads must fall, and I do write about it, one of the things that was ignored from the onset for a particular reason was class in the room. Because class was the quickest way to separate black students in the context of UCT. It was the very quickest way to make sure you draw lines between us. So you ignore it. And then all the other forms of oppression come up, but class continuously gets ignored. And when you ignore that question for long enough within an intense space, the explosion is, well, I love this phrase, who are you to tell us what to say or do when you came to the protest in your car? Yeah. Right? It's, it's such a simple thing, but it's extremely powerful of, yes, it's economic reductionism, but you can't then reduce class at the same time. So in your views, where does class sit? Well. You're fighting against the colonialism, decolonization project, and I'm arguing that this, there's a totalizing process okay. of blackening everything. These divisions, these fissures, class, race, I mean, yeah. class, gender, and so on, age, tribe, don't actually matter. They there, they could have a, a destabilizing, you know, effect on how we organize. But I don't think they're so important. What I think was I important know. about I don't that, know. I, I don't no, know the no, the fears must fall. Yes, UCT roads and vets. The, the, the English-speaking kids, which you call the middle class, they were only calibrated by the media, in fact. Yeah. Because those things that you, you, the big struggles you thought were involved in, I mean, TUT every single day is involved in even bigger yeah. struggles. No, I agree and, with you. And, and, in fact, the state, the way it responded to UCT and the, the response to TUT is completely different because they, you are semi-white. In so, a white institution, the violence doesn't yeah. come in the same way it comes to TUT. No, I agree But you are not speaking like you have a book. You're speaking yeah. for the whole movement. So I can, we'll touch on that because sometimes people claim to be orators, and I, I'm not one of those. We need to go to an ad break now. Um, We'll take more questions and comments after this break, but please stay with us as we go on.